Midas IT Philippines, an innovation company who develops civil, structural, and geotechnical analysis and design software, is launching a podcast for Filipino aspiring and practicing structural and geotechnical engineers. This is Structurally Speaking, a podcast you can listen to while at work. Welcome to this episode of Structurally Speaking, where we invite Midas user experts to share their expertise in the field of civil engineering. For today's episode, we will talk about how structural engineers safeguards their building to earthquake. Philippines is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire, making us susceptible to a lot of ground motion. Hence, this is a very important topic in structural engineering. Earthquake has destroyed a lot of lives and has destroyed a lot of buildings. So in this series of interviews and episodes with structural engineers, we will talk about the risk of earthquake because we can only prepare when we know the risk. What are the different methods of designing earthquake resistant structure? And what are the misconceptions, advices, and tips that a seasoned structural engineer can give us? Joining us today is a former president of ASEP. In fact, she has been the president of ASEF for multiple terms already. So specifically in years um, 2002 to 2003, 2003 to 2004, 2019 to 2020, and 2020 to 2021. Currently, he is also the vice president of Institute of Specialist Structural Engineers of the Philippines or ISSEP or ESEP a Structural Specialist Member of Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers or PICE, Structural Engineering Division, a Certified Construction Arbitrator at Construction Industry Arbitrator Commission or CISC, CIAC. He is also awarded as one of the Outstanding Filipino Engineers by the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers and Outstanding Structural Engineers by the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines. He also partakes in some of the publications that most of us, most of civil engineers know. But the most famous one is, of course, the NSCP or the National Structural Code of the Philippines. So with that, I would like to introduce the president of RS Eason and Associates. Engineer Ronaldo Santos Eason. Thank you very much, Norland. Good afternoon. And uh, again, thank you for inviting me in your program. It's our pleasure, sir. So just a question, sir. So how do you want me to address you, sir? Well, you can address me as Rani or Engineer Rani, which, whichever you prefer. It's okay. Yeah, I think I'll just call you Engineer Rani because most of the engineers in the associations are more familiar with that name. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, that would be okay. So from here, sir, from based on your introduction, I guess you really love serving ASEF, sir. Why is that? Ah, uh, yes, I've been active. Siguro, I've been active since I was president in two thousand two. Yes, sir. So I was active since nineteen ninety nine. So after three years of being active, I became president in two thousand two. So with that, sir, we are. Oh, really tapos I've uh, yeah I've been ano, I've been with ASEF for the longest time. I guess most of the ASEP members are really thankful because um, someone is really dedicated in serving the association. Uh, yes, primarily because diba, we have to uplift the practice of structural engineering in the Philippines. Tapos there are many issues that we need to consider. So yes, I, so that's why I've been active for the long for this for the longest time, as I've said. No? Yeah. Yes. So, jumping in into the topic, sir. So, are you ready with some of the questions? May baka mahirap yung topics, ha? So, of course, when we are talking about earthquakes, the first thing that comes to mind yeah, here in the Philippines is the big one. So, what are your thoughts about it? So, and as, as a structural engineer, do you think the structures that we currently have here in the Philippines can sustain the big one? Yeah, actually, uh, if you look at the NSCP, our NSCP, uh, the present NSCP 2015, the, we are designing for a type A seismic source. So when you talk about type A seismic source, the range of type A seismic source is from magnitude 7 to 8.4. Uh, 
uh, based on the NSCP. So the big one, if we're talking about the big one, we're talking about the Metro Manila. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or even, even Mindanao will also have big ones. No? But, but particularly for Metro Manila, we're looking at magnitude 7.2, so West Valley Fort. No? So, so of course, uh, based on previous studies since 2004, I think you have heard about Metro Manila earthquake impact reduction yeah. study. So your M. Myers, it says that most of the high-rise buildings uh, would be okay. Uh, of course, yung older buildings where you have the yung older buildings which were designed uh, in the in the codes where we don't have the stringent seismic detailing, yun yung mga structures uh, before 1992 code, yung NSCP na 1992, that was the, the fourth edition, yun yung medyo so, ano, vulnerable. And then the... Uh, the MMIR study also says yung ating mga non-engineered structures, which is primarily yung mga mga binibuild without without engineers, without proper contract, without good contractors, yung mga karamihan sa mga informal settlers, those will be vulnerable for in case there will be a big one in Metro Manila. Okay, so based on my uh, understanding, sir, so most of the casualties will come. Um, two structures that are non-engineered. Yes, yes, mostly, yeah. Based on the, ano, based on the study, yes. So. so, in this episode, also, or we're leaning towards the discussion of safeguarding a building against earthquake by following the code-based design. Mm -hmm. But we want to give the listeners an idea about the difference between code-based and performance-based approach. Okay, in simple terms, no, yung, the, you have the code base and then as, as against performance base. So, sa code base, uh, we have this, uh, we call this prescriptive, meaning uh, it's based on uh, uh, codes and standards developed na using uh, con uh, a concept of life safety. Ibig sabihin, when we design a structure, the, the structure should be able to resist yung uh, wind strong wind and strong earthquakes without causing the loss of life. So, ibig sabihin, uh, when we have life safety conditions, the building should be able to resist those strong earthquakes and strong typhoons enough for people to go out. So, not necessarily yung building should, be, should remain operational or should remain standing. Oh, no, no. It should stand, it should not collapse, but there may be portions that are damaged. No? So when we when we go now to performance based design, there are four levels that that are being considered. So padding, you design the building as operational, meaning uh, when you have a strong typhoon, a strong earthquake, immediately after that very strong earthquake, like for example a magnitude seven point two earthquake, the building would still be operational, meaning the people can people can still work and then no need to evacuate. And then you have this um, uh, life safety condition, and then you you have the collapse prevention. So 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 performance based design, the engineer and the stakeholder or yung owner determines what uh, performance level the stakeholder or the owner requires. So the build the, the engineer designs for it. As against yung ang, ang ating code base, it's based on a life safety design requirement. So that's that's a simple way of looking at performance-based design. Okay. So, both are are taking into consideration the, li the elimination of um, loss of life. Loss of life. Right? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Kasi yung minimum requirement is loss, loss of life. Diba? Okay. So, the, but, but, but I think there's a notion before na yung code-based uh, and perform performance-based is non-prescriptive. In fact, prescriptive na rin yun kasi there are conditions that you need to follow when you're doing performance-based design. Mm -hmm. So it's just not in the code, pero there are guidelines and rules how to do performance-based design. Oh. Yeah. So speaking of magnitude as well, so what do you think is the maximum ma magnitude the building can withstand if properly designed following the current provision of the local code? If properly designed using NSCP, as I've said, no, so NSCP 2015, it's 8.4. So if if uh, uh, historically speaking, kasi we have experienced 8.4, and the ASEP during its deliberation ng, ng seismic code, uh, 
na pumasok yung required na that our buildings can the earthquake provisions that we have now would be able to uh, carry or resist uh, an 8.4 earthquake. Of course, not all faults will generate a uh, magnitude 8.4 earthquake. So, iba-ibang fault, iba-ibang iba-ibang magnitude ang um, magigenerate. Like, like for example, the West Valley fault, as we have discussed earlier, it's 7.2. So, way, way below than the 8.4 maximum yeah. of the NCP. NCP. Yes. yes. So, now, we want to get more technical about this. So, according to NCP 2015, our governing structural code, so, what are the general requirements for seismic provision? So, how can we identify such components are part of the seismic force resisting frame? Actually, the first, the first thing that we have to consider uh, as, a, as a designer, diba? number one, we have to generate first the, the seismic requirements. No? So, very important, we find out what is the zone. By yung, uh, yeah. The Philippines divided into two zones, diba? zone, zone uh, 4 and zone 2. So, it's very easy because only Palawan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi would be, ano, would be uh, zone 2, but the rest of the Philippines will be under zone 4. So we also need to consider that uh, pag zone 4 you have set you have special seismic detailing requirements uh, more stringent than than zone 2. So when we generate also the seismic forces we have to know kung anong soil type. I think it's very important that the engineer should understand what is the soil properties beneath the building that they are constructing. Kasi di ba the soil will amplify the effects of the earthquake. Pag mas malambot yung lupa, then you have, then you have stronger earthquakes that can be generated. No? And then, of course, we have to know the lateral resisting system. So, so in the NSCP, you will find different uh, lateral resisting systems. So the basic systems would be yung dual system. You have the moment resisting uh, frame system, and then you have the bearing wall system and the special systems. So all these have different R values, which would affect the the base shear values to, to generate the you know, the the earthquake. No, so of course, as I, after after uh, after the, uh, knowing the earthquake forces, then the the engineer should be able to analyze the building properly. So so it is important the, that the building is analyzed. Na it will behave the same way as it is analyzed. So the engineer should be able to, uh, a, a good experienced engineer should be able to model the structure the way he wants the structure to behave, not otherwise, diba? Yes. Nangyayari kasi, there are cases that young engineers would just model the building, parang connect the dots, without even thinking how he wanted to, to uh, make the building behave. So. So even the structural systems, dapat the engineer should be able to identify if if anong structural system he will what structural system he will be using to make a proper building. No? So after that, so after you have analyzed everything using a good uh, structural engineering software, then you start designing and detailing. So it's important also that the engineer knows how to to properly detail. Because if you have the if you have the correct calculations, but you don't have them on the proper plans and detailing, the buildings will definitely have a problem. No? Diba? There are cases that, that, um, that yung the, the model or the structure is properly analyzed, but when it comes to the actual construction, the, the, the buildings or the, even the members are not properly uh, constructed, so it would lead to damage or, or possible collapse. Yeah. So moving on, sir. So we commonly hear a notion that the seismic detailing requirement for NSCP is an overkill, especially for low-rise structures. So are we really required to strictly comply with the seismic provision for residential or low-rise structure, or do we have an exemption? Actually, uh, it's not really very strict, diba? Uh, if we're looking at if we're looking at detailing, uh, we have to follow these detailing requirements. Because uh, we are very, diba? as I've said, we're a very seismic-prone area, and only Palawan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi are the areas where you have this low 
seismic zone. So the rest of the Philippines is seismic zone 4. So there, there are times that people would say na if you have the, a low-rise structure, you don't need to do seismic detailing. But if you imagine, diba, uh, uh, like there are many buildings that have uh, uh, that we have experienced for the past so many earthquakes diba, that have collapsed yeah. during earthquake, like the Mindanao earthquake and then the Bohol earthquake. So even low-rise structures should should be properly detailed. No? So so uh, I think the NSCP is not very stringent. Uh, it's just something that we have to follow, so, so that we have we have more resilient structures or earthquake resistant structures. Okay. So with that, sir, regarding uh, regarding seismic detailing, so how we uh, how do we assess if our frame would fall under ordinary, intermediate, and special category in terms of this kind of detailing? Actually, when you talk about ordinary, intermediate, and then special, you're talking about the type of detailing that is required, no? Or the or the requirements of detailing that is required. So I would like to emphasize, sa atin, sa Pilipinas, you cannot uh, get away with that, no? So, so lahat ng structures natin, of course, except for uh, Palawan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi, yung mga zone to, zone 2, should be uh, using uh, special seismic detailing. So, yung special seismic detailing na yun is found in NSCP. And we should follow that. If you look at the NSCP, you will, you will see that for zone 4, hindi permitted yung ordinary and intermediate uh, lateral load resisting systems. So, in in ano, in ano zone 2, pwede yung intermediate. Pero, if, di ba, as I've said, halos buong Pilipinas. So, is under zone 4. So, dapat lahat tayo would, would, should be familiar with special uh, seismic detailing and our structure should be under, or lateral resisting systems natin should be under uh, special seismic category. Okay. So, I hope our viewers oh, are I taking hope, note you know, of that. Yeah, we should we should take note of that very well, no. I think hindi na naman mahirap kasi you have to you just have a set of requirements to follow para mag-comply ka with special uh, as a special seismic uh, resisting structure. Okay. So another question sir. So uh, a little bit out of the topic. So just how to simplify or how do we consider a structure as high rise or as a tall building well actually sa philippines medyo ano hindi yung undefinition natin for low rise is hanggang 3 stories pag mid rise hanggang 5 and then when you go above 10 10 stories you are already considered high rise no there are if you look at the different uh, different um, countries iba iba yung definition nila ng high rise but generally uh, when you go more than 10 to 15 stories, you're already into the high-rise region. Tapos we have this now, since um, di ba, there are many tall buildings. So when you talk about uh, super tall buildings, we're talking about mga 90-story buildings. So that is considered super tall. Yan, yan. So iba-iba, I think. Uh, but generally, kapag more than 10 ka na, you're already considered high-rise. Okay. So now, we know the building is composed of different structural components, but aside from the individual component, we also have strengthened the joint. We also have to strengthen it. So why is it important to consider the detailings of the joint, sir? Well, uh, I, think, um, uh, I think for us to, to clearly identify that, no? or uh, to know in, in layman's term, diba? just imagine, for example, if you're an old person, so, ano yung unang bumibigay? Diba yung joints, diba? Yes. Sir. So, if you have joints na weak, then you tend to you tend to collapse or you tend to bend, diba? Yes. Ngayon, uh, yung joint is very important in a structure. Kasi, diba, that's, that's where you, 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 that's where the columns and the beams meet. And then, if you look at the, if you look at the different structures na affected by earthquake, most of the structures would not collapse kapag ka localized yung failure. Meaning, kapag ka beam lang, pag beam nag-fail, hindi magkakollapse yung structure. Yung kapag ka slab yung nag-fail, hindi magkakollapse. When you have a single column that is buckled, hindi siya magkakollapse. Pero if you have multiple joints that uh, are damaged, then the building would have a tendency to collapse. So it's very important that we look into the proper detailing of joints. Do we have requirements for joints regarding joints here, yes. 
we have the six over five requirement. The 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 capacity, the moment capacity of the column should be at least twenty percent stronger than the moment capacity of the of the beams, diba? framing into it. No? So, so it's it's very important. If we just look into it as a as a person, yung analogy, analogy nga the joint should be very strong para the building should be able to stand up very well. No? So that's why it is very important that we detail the joints very well. Okay, so I like the idea that you compared a building to a person. Oh, di ba kapag may rayuma ka na or yes, may, may, may joint, may gout ka na, hindi ka na makatayo, di ba? So, so nakaka-relate po ako. Oh, meron ka na. <laughs> <laughs> so, so di ba yung sa building, ganun din sa building. Tapos, yun nga, I would like to emphasize, if you look at the damages ng mga, ng mga earthquake structures, ng structures, most of the damages pag joint, more catastrophic yung failure yes, ng, ng structure. Ayun. Okay. So, may natutunan akong bago ngayon. Okay? So, how do you deal with clients that say this is over-designed or quote unquote bakit yung structure na to nakatayo na ng for how many years pero ganito lang naman yung dimension at bakal natamaan na din ng ganitong lindol etc etc so how do you deal with those kinds of clients sir well actually uh, we just explain it properly to them diba kasi at this time uh, diba if you if you uh, talk with clients now because of the softwares the clients know already ano yung mga uh, mga limits ng design, di ba? And they also require us to design the buildings uh, more efficiently and more economically. Ngayon, with the with the with the softwares that we have now, most of the most of the designs are I I would say sagad, meaning meaning uh, we just follow the code. We don't we don't do over design because it's not at this time, di ba? Economy is very important. So if you over design, the client will be able to to know it. So so we're telling the clients uh na this these structures are not over designed. Of course, the the buildings will have different behavior. Syempre yung L type building, yung rectangular building or yung square building will have if will have different behavior. And then yung buildings were, will be located in different areas. So pag malayo ka sa sa fault, you have less earthquake. When when you're very near the fort, you have more more earthquake. So the the behavior of the buildings will be changing. So ngayon, uh, so I would say that for most cases, no, there will be no over-designed structure if we follow the code to the letter. Tapos if we utilize yung software, kasi ba sa software? Yeah. So software naman you don't do if you follow the detailing requirements or the design of the software. Wala naman siyang over-designed, di ba? Yeah. Uh, unless you override it na yung factor yung how do you override? In the, very difficult to override the software design, yeah. di ba? Or maybe in s some engineers would add rebars, pero it's not the case anymore kasi because of the, the key performance index na nire-require ng KPIs, na nire-require ng client, dapat, dapat yung, yung concrete mo approximately should follow this range, yung rebars mo should approximately follow this range. Of course, it's not all the same for all buildings, pero where it's difficult to do over design at this time. Yes. So with that, sir, what software are you talking about while ago? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we're using a lot of softwares. Midas is one of them. And uh, yeah, I think you know, you Midas uh, helps in, um, in the proper analysis and, uh, no, and uh, detailing of the structures. Yes. Right? So you have these interfaces. Na, uh, Midas Gen would have those interfaces na, would help young young engineers to do the detailing. Yes, sir. Especially on the design part of my test. Yes, yes. So this, uh, of course, you know, maganda with my test. Then you have both analysis, and then you have the detailing and the drawing also. Right? Yes. So. And then, speaking of, sir, we're also receiving a lot of questions since we're usually um, attending some of the events of ASEP. So, will ASEP release a structural code that is particular for low-rise or residential structures? Yes, uh, merong, ano, merong NSCP Volume 3, which is supposed to be for residential structures. It's under, it's under development by, by the Housing Committee. Oh, so, okay. hopefully it will be released soon. Yeah. But no specific date no yet. No specific right? date yet, yeah. Oh. Okay. But at least our engineers and our viewers yeah, have we, something to look into. We, we have those, we have a committee working on it already. Uh, actually, it's been, uh, it's been happening for the last so many years. Hindi na finalize yung 
yung code for it. Pero we have that committee. We have a standing committee for the housing committee uh, for low-rise residential structures. I think a lot of engineers, especially the freelancers. Who yeah, especially developers. And developers. Oh, kasi yes, they, find, uh, they find the volume 3 uh, stringent for low-rise structures. And they, they find the NSCP uh, uh, very stringent for low-rise structures, yung NSCP 2015, yes. and the rest of NSCP uh, for ano, very stringent. Yan. So, with the release of the NSCP Volume 3, so at least they have something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and also, aside from that question, sir, we also receive, I think this is the most um, asked question. So, when is the release of the NSCP 8th edition? Yeah, your NSCP 8th edition is being finalized at this time. So, by uh, the target is by middle of the year. Uh, yung NSCP 2024 will be will be released na nag -fi final draft na ng mga committees and then it's being deliberated and then for for final release by by middle of 2024 yeah so as mentioned while ago so in the current version of NSCP is in Midas Gen already but the with the upcoming release of the NSCP 8th edition or the NSCP 2024 so we are committed to include that um, design option as well in my gen. So, yeah. with the release of the latest code, so please expect the update in the latest version of my gen as well. Okay, so with that, sir, okay, so we just want to ask you do, ha do you have any um, advice or any recommendations or anything that you want to say to our um, aspiring structural engineers? Especially those who have just started. Well, yeah, uh, I would say na ano siguro as a starting structural engineer no, or somebody who's just started uh, into structural engineering uh, practice. No, I think it's very important that we don't rush, diba? I think yung software is meant to make our work faster or to make it more accurate. Pero importante pa rin that you should be able to to appreciate yung behavior ng structure. Uh, I would always tell my fellow structural engineers, no, or when we discuss, it is important na you tell the software what behavior you want the structure to, to do. Hindi yung you just input and then let the software give you the results. Diba? So parang hindi ganun kasi yung structural engineering. Kasi the, I think structural engineering is an art, di ba, na na you have to learn it's it's an art and a science no you have to you have to feel the behavior of the building para you can properly model it no of course important as i as i've been discussing about modeling important that we use um license softwares yung valid softwares kasi if we go by you know, if we go by yung mga pirated softwares yes. syempre we don't know if the results that that it turns out will be okay so we're more comfortable, of course, if we're using licensed softwares. No? So, so uh, lastly, no, important for the aspiring structural engineer to be patient. No, you cannot you cannot do it all at the same time. So, you can unti unti as you gain experience, of course, you will gain more projects, and then you will be able to do better structures, diba? So, so yun. So I think that would be my advice to to the young structural engineers. Okay. So just an addition, so for those who are aspiring to be a structural engineer or for those who are starting their structural engineering career, so you need to expand your network. So with that, so we have an upcoming event. So you, do you want to advertise? That yes, uh, we, have, uh, we, have the con we have our convention sa ASEP on, in Cebu at Bay Hotel on May 23 to 25. So that is ASEP Smart. Uh, 2024. No? So I, I would like to invite everyone to participate and you will be hearing a lot of uh, uh, experts discuss about structural engineering. So I hope everyone can come and attend sa, sa May uh, of this year sa ASEP convention. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you salamat, for joining Maraming salamat, Thank you. Cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> salamat. Thank you.